requires uh, that uh, when uh, there is a newborn uh, in a hospital, when uh, there is a birth, uh, that newborn before discharge is given something known as a pulse ox test, pulse oximetry. Uh, what that test does is measure the blood oxygen levels uh, so that uh, a doctor and a team of physicians can determine uh, if that newborn has a congenital heart defect. Um, it is the simplest way and the best indicator to determine if a newborn has that heart defect. Now, many of our hospitals are uh, performing this procedure right now. Uh, there is not uniformity across the system. That is what this legislation would provide. The amendment offered by my colleague from Quincy uh, would uh, put the implementation date at January 1, 2015, uh, instead of uh, July uh, 2014. Uh, while I am uh, both ambitious and hopeful uh, that the legislation uh, would be passed prior to July, uh, I know full well uh, that I did not want to be presumptuous, and I also know uh, that our hospitals and health care providers have been good partners in crafting this legislation, and we want to make sure that that uniformity across the system is achieved in uh, an effective way and not just simply in a quick way. Uh, so uh, we are putting this uh, in place with the amendment uh, starting January 1st, 2015. Uh, by way of background, uh, when we first filed this legislation, 13 other states already required their hospitals and health care providers uh, to perform this screening. Since uh, we filed this legislation, had the hearing and went through the process, fully 14 more states have put this in place as a requirement. So in 27 states, uh, when there is a birth, a pulse oximetry test is performed prior to discharge. Uh, why do we need to do this? It's about information. It's about making sure uh, that new parents aren't worrying about whether or not their kid has a congenital heart defect. They're simply worrying about what color they're going to paint uh, the room, uh, what they're going to name their newborn, uh, how many diapers they need to buy over the next week. Focusing on the things that uh, families should be focusing on, not whether or not their newborn uh, is healthy. Uh, this is a significant issue. We know uh, between 4 and 10 out of every 1,000 uh, live births in the United States uh, has a birth defect uh, that is brought on by a congenital heart defect. Uh, so we know uh, that this will provide information uh, to parents and families in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts so that they can start to treat that congenital heart defect as soon as possible. We know heart defects, uh, unfortunately, are on the rise. Uh, we know, as I said earlier, that heart disease is the number two uh, killer uh, in Massachusetts. And we know that one of the best ways to address it, knowing full well that we have the best health care system in the world here in Massachusetts, we know uh, that the best way to address that is with early intervention and early information right off the bat. Uh, we know, uh, finally, uh, by way of closing, uh, and anecdotally, although uh, more than anecdotally, uh, a real story, in New Jersey, right after they passed uh, this requirement, within the first 24 hours, a life was saved. Uh, a young baby was born. Uh, they found, uh, after uh, performing the pulse ox test, uh, that they had a congenital heart defect. Uh, they were treated, um, and at the very least, uh, the treatment uh, was as quick and effective and as efficient as ever could have been wished for. Um, and in the best case scenario, uh, that baby is alive today because of this. Um, so again, this is about making sure that parents and families have the information they need and our doctors and health care providers have the information they need to again reduce uh, the amount of uh, deaths uh, related to heart disease here in Massachusetts. Uh, I hope that when a vote is taken on this matter, it is taken by a call of the yeas and nays. Uh, and I hope uh, that this Senate again goes on record uh, in standing against heart disease and for our constituents.